Today, I'm going to show you guys how to compare and order fractions. We need to be able to look at two fractions or three fractions and put them in order from least to greatest or greatest to least. So, the three different things we'll look at are fractions with the same denominator, fractions with the same numerator, or using one half as a benchmark fraction. And this is one of your best tools when it's three fractions. All right. Now, if they have the same denominator, this kind of follows the common logic that you would use. You're looking at all of these, and they are all talking about eight parts, or eight total, to make one whole, rather. So, logically, the fewer parts, the smaller the piece. So, when we have the same denominator, we just put fractions based on the numerator in order and it always matters. You always want to look and see, did the order say least to greatest or greatest to least? And that usually is the only place that I see mistakes. So as we went through these, we know that out of a total of eight parts, we have two. Or out of a total of eight, we have four. A total of eight, we have five. And out of a total of eight, we have all eight, or that equals one as well. So same denominator fractions are not too challenging. Now, this is very counterintuitive. What you will look at here is the numerator, because we're saying all the numerators are the same. And then your logical brain says to you that with the same numerator, well, 16 is a much bigger number than 2, so that must be my largest piece. But that's not the case. So the way that I advise you to do this is to simply draw a rectangle. And this is uh, visually not completely accurate. You can tell that my border there is a little bit off. However, I can look at uh, this as a benchmark. One fourth and one half. So I know that one fourth is less than one half. And once I do that, then I can write my rule down that the larger the denominator, the smaller the piece when the numerators are the same. So in this case, if I wrote it from least to greatest, Look at these, 1 16th is my least, and I'm going to remove this. Call that my man eraser, my students should know that. 1 16th is the smallest, and it, it makes sense when you think about it, because out of 16 total pieces, I only have one versus the same size whole, and that's the thing we have to consider, is that all of these are based on the same whole unit, no matter what it is. Let's say I'm looking for a spot. Let's say this is the one whole. Well, if we only have 1 16th, we would just have a little bit versus 1 half. We have a lot. And once we establish that rule, then it becomes pretty straightforward. Okay, and I like 16th, 10th, 8th, 4th. I like to cross these out as I'm going and end with my largest piece, which is 1 half. Now, that same rule applies when your numerator is the same, no matter what the numerator. It's easiest to think about when it's 1. However, what do we do when we have something like this? Well, a little trick that I like to show students that I think helps them kind of make that connection is as long as my numerator is the same and I know that my whole is the same, I can look at these and change them all to a 1 to make sense of it. And then once I've done that, I can apply that benchmark thinking of, okay, here's my one whole unit. And, you know, I always say, like, I don't see a 1 half or a 1 quarter. Well, that doesn't mean I can't use it over here to help me remember that the smaller the number in the denominator, the larger the piece. And once I write that, draw that picture rather, then I like to write the rule. Okay? 
And by having it in front of me, it helps my thinking be very visual, and it helps me not make careless mistakes. So if I have the same numerator, remember, the larger the denominator is, the smaller the pieces are because there are more of them, so lower numbers are greater. Um, it's counterintuitive, but it does work. Now, the last one, one half as a benchmark. You compare the numerator to the denominator. Think of them as a relationship. And, you know, how does my numerator relate to my denominator? Well, is it greater than, less than, or equal to one half? This is the benchmark. So when I look at my numerator as it relates to my denominator, I have four out of a total of eight. Well, four is exactly one half of eight, so this is exactly one half. And of course, I could prove that mathematically as well by dividing by four. However, if your numerator is half of your denominator, you don't necessarily need to take that step. So that would be equivalent to one half. Now, seven is less than half of 16. However, it's very close. So it's very close to one half, but this is actually less than one half. And then I look at this next number. Nine is more than half of 12. So nine twelfths is greater than one half. So now if I were to have to put these in order, I could start with my four eighths. And then I know that 7 sixteenths is less than 1 half. So if I were saying least to greatest, that's 7 sixteenths, 4 eighths, and then I know that 9 twelfths is greater than 1 half. Now, if there is not one that's 1 half, which in fourth grade typically there is, because that is the skill we're building on, then you look at how close to 1 half. 7 sixteenths, well, what is 1 half? And that would be 8 sixteenths. So you can sort of decide which one would be closer to one half? And something like five twelfths, again, that's very close to one half. Six twelfths is one half, versus something like one fourth, well, we know that that's not as close. So in this case, five twelfths is greater than one half. Now, this is my request on that little one. Do not show the trick yet, please, of how to compare these two easily. I want it to make sense. I want them to be able to look at these numbers and use their mathematical reasoning ability. I promise you, I'll show the trick to the students and I'll help them understand why it works as well. However, practice, 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 friends. Remember, always look, least to greatest. You have three numbers, same denominator. Greatest to least, you have four numbers, same numerator. And then least to greatest, you have three numbers with different denominators. So this one, you are going to use one half as a benchmark, okay? And then lastly, you have two numbers that I want you simply to compare and use that number sense. Use your one half as a benchmark down here as well, but then think of how close to one half, which one is closer, which one is further. So a good tool on that might be to take your denominators and figure out what the numerator should be to have exactly one half.